Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zimbuel. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at uh, some more things that are new with Zim 7.3, and that is patterns, and to some degree, the tiles. The tiles were used to make the pattern, so we made some improvements to the tile uh, system as well in Zim. Uh, in the last bubbling, we also took a look at the progress bar and we cheated a little bit. We saw some patterns being used in the progress bar, uh, which is great, and patterns can be used there and in buttons, and, and that's what we're about to show you now. So let's have a look. Ooh, nice. There they are. And so these are just straight patterns, and then you can use the patterns, for instance, in a button or here in a progress bar, and there's an animated. Uh, pattern in the button. Exciting, huh? So these ones also can animate if you so desire. Uh, the first one was pixels. This one's noise. Here's dots. And there's stripes. Stripes has a gradient on it. And this one's slants. Hatch. Plaid. And bling! Woohoo! <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, pizza, these are pizzazz patterns. So with pizzazz three, the first pizzazz was used for making backgrounds like kidney shaped or boomerangs. Oh, <laughs> wait a minute. There's the same shape. Uh, kidney is a fat boomerang. Oh, it's rounded. It's more rounded. Yes, completely different. Right. Uh, so the first pizzazz was used to make uh, those background shapes. The second pizzazz was used to make icons that could be used in buttons and so forth. And then pizzazz three is for patterns and in particular animated patterns, which we've been wanting to do for quite some time. And uh, now we finally got to it because it's great to be able to sort of animate, easily animate a pattern in a button to sort of show, hey, warning, 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 we're loading, or whoa, wait, stop, that kind of thing. Very cool. Okay, so shall we dig into some code in behind here? Oh, yes. All right, here we are, pizzazz patterns. And we're using the Zim 7.3.0 and also including Zim pizzazz underscore zero three, which is available. Let's see, we got lots of things available here. How about this one? And Zim, if you go under the code and scroll down, uh, past the template, past the help section, mm, past the tools, past the accessibility, uh, here to the library. Uh, there's the socket, physics, three, and then pizzazz for backings, icons, and patterns. So this last one is uh, where you can find it. And the documentation for that is right in the code that uh, you'll, you'll get to. All right, so you can just like link to there and, and the docs are all inside there. There's this nice patterns example too, which is available. Oh, that, that's actually where that clicks through to patterns.html and zim. And that's what we're going through now. Uh, the code, as you can see, is sort of a little bit big. So I, I just want to take an overview and then we'll zoom in on it a bit uh, to make uh, allow you to see it a little bit easier. Uh, what we're doing, it's kind of neat. Uh, one of the things, this code is made by uh, a tile, uh, Zim tile in the background. Uh, tile just lays things out in rows and columns, so you can imagine that's pretty good for a pattern. And while we were working on that, we realized that we needed a series. So if we just take a look at those patterns again, oh, I don't need that anymore. Okay. Um, Zim uh, tile uh, can tile things like the same thing over and over again. So here's a bunch of circles. Blah, 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 blah. It makes a, a tile of a bunch of circles. Great. Uh, but if you want those to be different each time, like either a different shape or a different color, then you use uh, the Zim V value. So Zim V value allows you to pick from a, an array. Uh, uses Zik in the background. This thing called Zik, which picks. And that's really made Zim dynamic. I don't think that everybody realizes how uh, extremely exciting that is. <laughs> uh, hopefully, this um, the tiling or what's going on with the patterns will sort of show some of the power of that. Um, but we were picking randomly from an array, or you could pick from a range, and, or you could pick from a function, like a function would return a result. And if you wanted to pick in order, for instance, 
the plaid is in order. We're doing this color, then this color, then this color, and, and these stripes are in order. Uh, well, there wasn't any easy way to do that. You couldn't just throw a couple, a couple colors into an array because it would pick randomly from the array. So we kind of recognized that that was a bit of a weakness. Uh, it was solved by, you could make your own function and just in the function say, okay, take these things and each time increase a count and pull from the array in order. And that was like five lines of code, not very hard to do, so we lived with it. But uh, it would be better to have a system for people who didn't want to have to do that each time. And so we developed one called Make Series. So what Make Series does is it receives an array. You pass in an array. Uh, well, this this is it happening right here. Here's an array of things. As a matter of fact, this whole large production here, this all of this, is a tile. And we wanted to tile this one, and then this one, and then that one. And that, we didn't want to randomly tile them here. <laughs> we wanted them tiled in a specific order. <laughs> and there was no pr prior way of doing that aside from doing some custom code. So what we've done is we said, okay, well then make an array of the things you want in order and pass it into this function called, uh, right here, make series. So here are the things that we want to display in order. They happen to be uh, tiles themselves. Uh, those are what we want to display in order. And we run make series. What that does is it returns a function that will automatically run all of these things one after another. So every time you run that function, it will get the next one. And that's perfect for passing into Zik or into ZimV. So here we are passing that series into our tile. And that allows us to get each of those in a specific order. But in some cases, we do want random things. Like in that first pixels example, there we are passing in an array to uh, make uh, well, not to make, yeah, into, into make pattern. Make pattern is the function in pizzazz that will make these patterns. So uh, it accepts a ZimV value there for colors. And now we're getting either blue or green. If we want either blue, red, or green, then we can do that. And we refresh here. And now it's randomly picking those things and we'll animate, animate those things. Um, but in uh, another case, such as the slants, those are the angled lines, we want a series there. And so if we pass in white there, we want them always to go brown, white, and gray. And so here, here they are, brown and, and gray, and now they're brown, white, and gray. So if we did those randomly, if we took away the make series, now we're just saying, okay, uh, pick randomly from there. That's the traditional Zik way of doing it. Then we would get sort of uh, kind of a neat look too, um, we want uh, the slants to not be random like that. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. Ba -doop -ba -doop. Make series. Good. And I don't really want white in there. Ba -doop. And I don't want red in there. Okay, so um, you kind of get the idea. What we're doing is we're making a list of things that we want to tile, an array, passing it into make series, and then passing that into the tile. Now, in behind the make pattern, uh, a lot of these things look familiar. Uh, the type is kind of like um, when you make a tile, you pass in usually an object that you want to use to make the tile. Oh, a bunch of circles. Oh, a bunch of squares, etc. So we've done that too, uh, but we've just given them labels. Now, that's the thing about pizzazz. We're sort of showing you how these can be done. You're welcome to add your own to pizzazz and you know redo that or just use use the tile to make your own patterns in a very similar way. Now one thing about the patterns is it's a container of a bunch of things. It's actually a tile of um, a bunch of things and the tile extends a container. But we've given that a type of pattern as in it has a type property. All of Zim objects have a type property. Uh, it would be type circle, type tile, type container, etc. But um, this one is a type pattern. So uh, that works in special ways for the buttons. For instance, the buttons will uh, mask that pattern for you. So if you just throw a pattern right on the screen here, that's what it looks like. But if you put it into a button or into a progress bar, that pattern gets masked in there or a pane. Uh, or anywhere else these um, these can go. Okay, so let's see uh, what's next then. 
Um, right, so we're then asking for the colors of these things, a series of colors. Uh, the interval is how you animate it. So what we've done is we've made them all animated with intervals of various speeds, but we've started them off as paused. So they start paused. If we didn't start them off as paused, let's save that and refresh here. We've taken away the pause, and now it's, it's just animating. Okay, but we wanted them to start as pause to start and then uh, click on them to make them run. And that's it for that one. The There's a size that's available. So there's the slants. If we make the slants twice as big, then it looks like this, uh, which, you know, whatever. <laughs> that now is twice as big. It doesn't fit, <laughs> fit in with the rest of it quite as well, does it? Uh, because there's spacing and stuff in the tiles and, and, and this and that. But anyway, uh, if, if you don't want it to be that big, what's happened is we've made the pattern itself, like this, these lines that size, then obviously we need, would, would need to reduce the rows and columns to get it to be roughly the same size. Now, it may be that one day we allow you to specify the size of the pattern that you want, like the dimensions of the pattern. That might be easier. But anyway, a little bit of work, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> Don't worry. All right, that was rows and columns. Then uh, there's interval, start, pause. Anything else different in here? Green. Gray, blue. Oh yeah, take a look at the plaid. Here is green, gray, green, blue. And check it out. Uh, this is what green, gray, blue look like. So we refresh here. And you see how that's a bit different? It's touch lopsided. I mean, it actually looks pretty good still. And maybe I've seen plaids like that. Uh, but just by adding that green back in there, green, comma, in there, uh, I think it makes a nicer, uh, for, a, for a nicer plaid sort of more symmetrical feeling to it. Uh, here's a background color, by the way, a background color of darker on bling. If you don't have a background color, some of these patterns will be see-through, uh, like the hatch, if there's, it'll hatch certain parts, but uh, not others. Uh, oh yeah, and there's the background's gone, so it just shows the gray through there. And you also might want to drop the alpha on some of these. Like this one actually has different transparencies in it. Um, so if we put this on a background of white, it would seem brighter than that. Right now, it, it's the p transparencies of the pixels are showing through to the gray. So let's try that uh, background. Where'd it go? Lost it. I take it out. What was it on again? It was on the bling. Bling. I must have taken it out. Okay. Okay. Dum 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 I've been coding for like 24 hours straight. Well, maybe not, but it seems like it. Uh, so we're up in pixels and background color, and this time we will make... Oh, that's neat too. Uh, I think in the last one I showed you colors. Colors we no longer need to put frame dot, frame dot, frame dot. We can put zim dot if we want, but if we're not needing the namespace, we can just put the color. So we just put white without quotes, and that's the zim white, which happens to be the same as it. all other whites. So there's what the um, pattern looks like with white in behind it. And because what that's doing is it's taking the two colors and then it's randomly putting in them th them in there and randomly setting their alpha between zero and one, sort of. And you get, the, what it, I don't know, it is also a noise pattern. I'm not sure really what the difference between pixel and noise is, aside from the fact that for noise, we did not do that. So it's just a two color thing. Okay, next then, let's undo that though. Or I'll just take the background out of there. How's everybody doing? Is this exciting? I hope it is. And there's us making the series, and here's us uh, tiling that. Now, a couple of different things in tile itself. One is this ability to do series. The other thing is we swapped up a little bit of the um, the parameter order there. Our apologies. We've added a few more things as well to it, uh, although we don't see them here. That was for another example. Shall we see if we can find that other example? Let's see. I think it was over here. Bubbling badges. That's remote. Here's local. Uh, where the heck was that? It was in Explore. My apologies. 
It'll be worth it, I promise. Explore, and it was called default font. That's it. So default font has been sort of slipping in here. And I think what I might do, uh, that'll start with a D. Jeez, have I explored this much? Holy moly. Uh, I was planning on doing an exploration of default font here. So let's hope, hope this works. Open a browser. Yeah, it does. So this is a tile, right? Now. Uh, not That's a grid. Uh, sorry, a pad. Uh, and this is tabs, but the layout of all of these components is in a tile, and that's really cool. So uh, let's uh, open the source of that, or we can just double click it here. Default font, maybe I did already. So here are the objects that we want to tile. Now, before I put in some information, it was really cool. Was, uh, I want to tile a new label, a new button, a new tab. <laughs> just, that, that was it. New pad, new stepper. <laughs> and so it was just an array of that. Note that we're making a series out of it and passing that in as the object of the tile. So we make a series out of that array and check this out. Uh, then we can set the row si call size and row size. So we didn't have that before. Um, we had the, the, row, the columns and rows, and what those would be set by is by however big the things were that we were tiling. Now, I did something fancy there, and I don't know if it even makes sense, where it was almost a dynamic uh, sizing, where it would look at how big the last one was and, and then tile the next one next to it. Even. And so and that helped in, under some circumstances, but there's definitely some cer most circumstances, I think, where you probably want those columns and rows to be a specific size. So what we had been doing previously is if we were doing these, we would try and, uh, you know, set, uh, we, we, by the way, we can now um, uh, put set bounds uh, right on the end of that. So we could set bounds and we could say, hey, oh, make this 300 by 300. Uh, set bounds works a little bit differently than the CreateJS set bounds, where you do not have to, if you don't want to, put those first two in there. So we've done that with the size of a container and a, a variety of other things, cache dimensions and stuff. If you put four things in there, then it specifies a rectangle, including X, Y, width and height. But if you only put two things in there, which is most of the time, uh, then it just starts at zero. So that would be uh, manually setting bounds of these. So if you just manually set the bounds, you would end up getting a tile <laughs> like that. Or if I put 200 in there, then you would end up with this thing. But that was a bit of a pain. So, uh, oh, and I was gonna say set bounds as well is chainable. So now, uh, see the thing is I wanted to do that. And this was, this is new to 7.3. I wanted to be able to set those bounds at this point right in here. I don't wanna have to go out and make variables with them and have it not chainable. So this set bounds is chainable and uh, great. Uh, but anyway, it turns out that I didn't like the looks of it. It's like, oh, that's a little bit too much work. What we really need is a uh, column size and a row size. <laughs> like we're getting to be a lot like an HTML table and I'm kind of going, all right, well, the next thing we would probably want to see on this, can you name it? <laughs> like background colors on this. <laughs> <laughs> on the cells <laughs> going up for crying out loud. I'm just making an HTML table. Ah. Um, so anyway, uh, there we there we are. That was some extra stuff uh, to do with the tiles. Uh, by the way, that is default font. But look for a future exploration of the default font and how, how that works. Alrighty, we'll leave it at that for now and close this down. Um, so there were some parameter order changes. You're going to have to look for that. And uh, also this clone false. We're passing in uh, eight things. We don't want to just say, okay, clone this one, clone that one, clone that one, clone, like clone the eight things and show the, the eight clones. There's no point in doing that. We just want to show the originals. Uh, often though, when we're making patterns from tiles, we want some original or an original put in there and then we just make clones of it. Uh, copies it. So uh, that's a little bit more there. There's interaction as well that you can check out. We use the hit test grid. We found that with all of these things animating on Firefox, there was uh, with mouse overs, as soon as we put in like even a cursor call, uh, it slowed down a bit. That won't happen on mobile, and hopefully that'll only get better as we proceed through time. So this is a hit test grid on that thing. Um, there's some cool things going on in here. Just, you know, take a look at, at what that is. 
Uh, one thing you'll note is uh, we called it interaction because we're, oh, let me refresh that. Yeah. Uh, when I click, it, it, it goes. So basically what we're saying in there somewhere is, where are we? Patterns and loop. We are item pause interval. Uh, oh yeah, so the patterns have a pause interval. It's got an interval parameter. So if we say pause interval, then that's going to pause it. And then we probably unpause the interval uh, somewhere. That's upper case right there. Okay, so that's us toggling the pause of the interval based on whether it's, the interval is already paused. And then there's all the progress stuff and the button. Oh yeah, so that's exciting. Let's see how we apply these patterns to uh, the button and the progress bar. How about we do the button first? Because we see the button first. Here's that. So here's the button stuff. First of all, we made a button pattern. Uh, pizzazz.make pattern, and this is just the default pattern, but we put it at a rows of eight. Let's just drop that down to rows of four and see what that looks like. Maybe we'll bring the alpha up on that as well to a full one. And this will be on the button. Refresh. So there it is. Can you see that? Actually, that looks uh, kind of cool as well, but that's not good. And the other one, what we're doing is we're, we're not uh, cloning it um, because uh, clone would remake the pattern randomly. So what we did is we took its uh, cache canvas uh, that that button was cached, or sorry, the pattern was cached, and we passed that into a bitmap and then just sent a register. So that means we've got exactly the same pattern even though it was made randomly. So that was kind of a neat trick. You see, as we roll over that, let me, let me just uh, increase the alpha of the other one uh, right here. To one as well and refresh here okay if we didn't do that if we just cloned it then we would get a, a different random pattern in there which you may you may want or may not almost like that better than the, the traditional button but you can see that the pattern now is made uh, too big now what or too small sorry what we could do there is just say size colon and, and make the size bigger I don't know how big it was uh, 20 comma and then it would certainly fit. And you've got sort of a bigger pattern back in there. But what, what the point was, though, is you're trying to make this uh, so that it fits close to the size of the button, we, which was, uh, for us, rows of eight. And then we copied that, as, as you can see there. Remember, you've got a URL to this. So you can view this code. Oh, I did say I was going to make it bigger, though. My apologies. Let's make that a bit bigger right now that we're into the details here. Note that uh, this was one thing that threw me for a loop uh, when I didn't do this. Uh, this last bit here, here's what it looked like. So there's the pattern and the other one isn't masked. It's, it's just kind of big and that that's actually the size of the pattern. And you can slightly see it there, can't you? Just the, the gray in the background there. Um, and what happened is if you were to clone it, you, I think you yeah, if you clone it, you get the fact that it's still a pattern. But if you're just taking its its visuals there, its cache canvas, and put it into a new bitmap, then the type of that is a bitmap. So all we've done is said, oh, by the way, I want the type of that to be treated as a pattern. And now that bitmap will be masked. So that that's pretty cool, too. That really means if you want to, uh, and you're worried about uh, putting... Uh, say a, a picture, an image as a background for a button, and you really wanted that masked to the shape of the button, you can just say, hey, bitmap.type equals pattern, throw that into the backing of the button, which we're about to see. So here's, it's a backing parameter, and we're saying, please make that the, bu the button pattern. Roll backing, please make it the button pattern two, which is this one. Don't make that the same, uh, the same one, I don't think. There might be uh, copying issue where one gets removed. I'm not sure. Should we check it out? See if it breaks or not. So there it is. The same pattern. Uh, refresh here. Yeah, it's gone. So you need to pass in two different patterns. That's like most most assets. Um, they can't be in two places. Well, it's not quite at the same time, but you just clone it or whatever to make a second one. 
usually you don't want the same. If you wanted the same pattern, just don't put anything in there. <laughs> so now I refresh here and it will just, uh, as I roll over, keep, keep that pattern. So if you don't care about the rollover pattern, Better. You could change the color here. You could pass in a rollover color for the, the, the font, and that would be just fine. Okay, so um, isn't that neat? That's that's it. That's all you need to do. Now, there is also a weight backing uh, as well. Now, what we've done is it's sort of very clearly outlined in the updates and in the docs now. Uh, the button has three different states. Um, well, three different sets of states, and each of those has a rollover state. So there's the normal and the normal rollover. There's the weight and the weight rollover. And there's the toggle and the toggle rollover. A toggle is when a button changes from one thing to another and back again, back again. The weight is a bit different. It's what's uh, happening here where it will change the button but we can do things. We can make it wait only a certain amount of time, or we can manually clear the wait when something finishes loading, or uh, or we can just um, I like the the confirm thing, and, and that's it, it's quite beautiful. You've got this button. You press it. It says confirm, and like it changes to say confirm, and it's red. And then after two seconds, it turns back to the normal button and doesn't do anything unless you press it again. So it'll turn to a confirm, turn red. If you press it again within two seconds, then it activates. So we have we have really, I think, nailed that. Um, we should probably do an explore on that again if we haven't already, because that is that is really cool. And it's extra cool now that we've got animated buttons. Uh, so super. So here we have something that's saying loading, and uh, it will load this button loading pattern, which is right here. And that's stripes, and it's a series, and it's animated. If we don't want it animated, we could just take that away, and we refresh here. And now when we press it, there's the pattern, not animated, saying loading. And when this finishes loading, uh, we clear the weight, and that's all that needs to be done. Like when that finishes loading, clear the weight, uh, button dot clear weight and it goes back to the normal button when we can do it again. Now, another cool thing is while it's doing that, that button's not active. I can't, I can't click on it, which is really cool. It's waiting, I click and note that it didn't do anything, which is uh, neat. And now it's back and I can do something. So um, that happens oh, boop, 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 by going right here somewhere button dot on mouse down. So if button's waiting, return. We've sort of hard coded the uh, progress bar. We saw a bit of that the last time where once it's reached 100, then we say button dot clear weight. Uh, we hide the bar. We also have to clear the button if we click off the stage. So when we do this, it, it clears it. If we click on one of these, it clears it, etc. Um, so that's uh, have a look here. That's a nice arrangement that you might want to use at times. I mean, this stuff is relatively complex, agreed, but in the scheme of things, once you do it once or twice, it's actually very, very easy to put together. And I don't think it can really be any uh, simpler. I know that we've had more complex things already and thought that it was simple and I keep on distilling it down and uh, it's coming along pretty well. Like in, in the past we didn't have uh, backings for the weight state so we had to manually load. There's a load backing or something in the button. We had to manually load buttons uh, or backings at times and I actually did the whole bubbling with those and went okay I keep on saying uh, you know, okay, fine. And so I went into button and button has completely been overhauled. Uh, we had sort of built these things up one at a time, you know, over the years. And each time we sort of cheated a little bit and just swapped these things. And now uh, there's so many backings and, and it also works with icons as well. You've got icons for each of those states. So there's like, um, well, three different types, each with two. So that's uh, each with two sets, so that's six. Uh, and then icons as well, so 12 different uh, things that we're having to manage in the background at, uh, at different times. And then also ones with patterns. Nice, huh? Oh, that's it. So I think that that's been pretty lengthy. Uh, we've seen patterns. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll be able to make use of these patterns. Certainly looking forward to, to doing that. 
And that has been what's bubbling at Zim uh, with Zim 7.3.0. If you're still here, that means you, uh, you must be right into it. Uh, make sure you let some others know. Work with somebody. It's, it's nice to work with somebody and teach somebody. Uh, whatever. Go back to school. Teach it at school. That sounds good. And we also have the Slack channel, uh, zimjs.com slash slack. Uh, come on by and say hi. You know, I'd love to hear from you. There's people there answering questions and asking questions and so forth. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Ciao.